Today, we're diving into one of those everyday mysteries we rarely stop to question. What is fire actually made of? You've seen it dance on a candle wick, leap from a campfire or blaze in a fireplace. It's mesmerizing, dangerous and warm. But what is it? Is it a solid, a gas, a plasma or something else entirely? Why does it glow? Why does it flicker? Fire for something so familiar is shockingly misunderstood. So let's break it all down right here on History of Simple Things. First off, let's bust a myth right out of the gate. Fire isn't a substance. It's not made of one thing you can scoop into a bag or store in a jar. Fire is actually a chemical reaction, a process, not a physical object. What you see when you look at a flame is the visible result of that process, kind of like how a rainbow is the visible result of light bending through water droplets. You can't touch a rainbow, and in the same way, you can't exactly hold fire either. Fire happens when three things come together in what scientists call the fire triangle, heat, fuel, and oxygen. You need a combustible material, like wood or gas, a heat source to start the reaction, like a match, and enough oxygen, usually from the air, to keep it going. Remove any one of these three and, poof, no more fire. Now here's where it gets really interesting. What is that glowing part of the flame actually made of? When something burns, let's say wood, the heat causes it to break down. The complex molecules in wood decompose into simpler ones, releasing gases like carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, water vapor, and hydrocarbons. These hot gases rise, reacting with the surrounding oxygen, and this is where the flame appears. So the flame itself is mostly made up of hot gases, but not just any gases. They're in an excited energetic state. As these particles get super hot, the atoms and molecules inside them begin to emit light. The flame glows because of this. It's the gases radiating energy in the form of visible light. The yellow part of a typical flame, like from a candle, comes from tiny soot particles, little specks of carbon that get so hot they glow. Think of them as microscopic pieces of charcoal suspended in the air, emitting light like embers. In contrast, flames that burn very cleanly, like those from alcohol or gas stoves, often appear blue. That's because they produce fewer soot particles and the color comes from excited gas molecules instead. You might have heard someone say that fire is a form of plasma, which is sometimes called the fourth state of matter after solids, liquids, and gases. This is partly true. At very high temperatures, like those in a welding torch or lightning, the gases in fire become ionized, meaning the atoms lose electrons and become charged. That's the textbook definition of plasma. So, in some kinds of fires, the really hot ones, yes, there is plasma involved. But your average candle flame? Not quite hot enough to qualify. It's mostly just hot gases and glowing soot particles. So while plasma can be part of fire, especially at extreme temperatures, it's not always present. Let's talk about color. We often associate fire with orange and yellow, but flames can actually appear in many colors depending on what's burning. That's because different elements release different wavelengths of light when they get hot. It's kind of like their unique light signature. Burn copper, you'll get a green flame. Sodium gives off a bright yellow flame. Potassium, purple. That's why you might see colorful bursts in fireworks. They're not just pretty by accident. It's all chemistry. Fireworks engineers literally paint the sky using elements and fire. 
So the color of a flame can tell you a lot about what's burning and how hot it is. Blue flames usually mean a more complete combustion with less soot and higher temperatures. Orange flames, cooler and dirtier, filled with glowing soot. Another question you might have wondered about, why does fire flicker? Why doesn't it just stay still like a light bulb? Flickering happens because fire is incredibly sensitive to airflow. As hot gases rise, cooler air rushes in to take its place. This movement of air, combined with turbulence and changes in fuel availability, causes the flame to shift, bend, and pulse. It's constantly reacting to its environment. That's also why candles go wild near an open window and why campfires dance in the wind. Fire is essentially a living process, always responding to what's around it. It's never static. It breathes, it shifts, it reacts. That brings us to a poetic but surprisingly common question. Is fire alive? It breathes, it consumes, it grows, it dies, it even spreads. Sounds pretty alive, right? Well, not quite. Fire has no DNA, no cells, no ability to reproduce in a biological sense. It can grow and spread like a living thing, but it's purely chemical. It doesn't want to do anything. It just follows the rules of physics and chemistry. Still, it's easy to see why ancient humans thought of it as a living spirit. It's hypnotic, powerful, and strangely organic. So, what is fire actually made of? It's made of light, heat, energy, and gas, all swirling together in a delicate chemical reaction. It's not a substance, but a process. A release of energy that occurs when matter transforms, often dramatically, from one state to another. Despite how ancient and familiar it is, fire remains something truly extraordinary. It helps shape human civilization, giving us warmth, cooked food, tools, and even the first light in the darkness. And yet we still marvel at it, still watch it flicker with wonder, trying to make sense of it. So the next time you light a match or sit by a campfire, remember, you're witnessing not just a flame, but a dance of molecules, a glow of excited atoms, and a process as old as the stars themselves. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.